coming along to watch our demonstration. My name is Michelle O'Neill. Um, I'm from Cherry Tree Equine, and this is the delightful young girl in Q, who's having his uh, first really big public outing. Um, so he's been a little, uh, he's been a little, uh, uh, had a bit of an awakening this weekend to everything that goes on at field days, from track to pools during the open. He's done a great job. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of work this morning. I'm going to show you a bit of that groundwork. And I'm going to talk specifically, you know, how the groundwork you can do can relate to your pit work. Um, so, you know, it's all about actually making sure that when you actually swing your leg over that horse, you're safe. So make sure that, you know, you know where your horse is at mentally. Um, and, and that when you get on that horse, nothing is going to go wrong. You know, the last thing you want is, you know, to get on and, and suddenly feel like you're out of control which is something that everybody feels at some stage. And it is, it's a pretty bad feeling, you know? Like, you know, these, are, these are big animals, they're big animals, and, and, and we need to know that we're working with them, not against them. So, uh, yeah, a horse like this, if I was to bring him here today and actually and ride him, to ride him with him, I'd actually have him out here in the arena 15 minutes before I started to be groundworking, making sure and checking in that he was, you know, good to go <laughs> before we started. Things like that, like there's heavy horses coming around the back of him, you know, like he's going, oh, there's a horse. You know, I can control that when I'm standing here, but I can't control that when he's on his back. But, you know, soon he's offered us this opportunity to get his attention. You know, if I've got a horse that is doing something like what he's doing now and not paying attention to me, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move his feet, okay? Because if he's looking out over there and thinking about heavy horses and what's going on, He's probably not very aware of what I'm doing, and that's when I can be in trouble. So what I'll start to do is I'll actually start to move around. And you can see, he's not all that switched on to me at the moment. Like, you start to read their body language at this point, you know, he's looking around over there, his ears and his eyes, like you can see by his ears where he's focused. And you watch his ears, and as he comes around here, see how his ears are pricked and he's looking at those horses? Then as he comes back around here to me, he starts to bring that inside ear toward me and he starts to focus on me a little more. Now, this horse I bred him, as I've owned him his whole life. He's a four-year-old. So, you know, I kind of know him like pretty well inside out. He's been doing groundwork since he was a weanling. So I know straight away when he's not focused on me. I don't even, you know, I don't even have to think twice about it. And that's the kind of relationship you want to build with your horse. You want to be able to know exactly what's going on with them. And you can see, like, I didn't ask him to do that. And his head's very high. Notice how his pole is well above his wind. It's kind of up like this. You know, and he's just a little bit stressed about the world. So I'm going to start getting his attention a little more. Now, I've just been setting him around on the circle while I'm talking to you, but I'm not actually a huge fan of doing that. What I would rather do is I'd actually rather be making him do stuff like this and get his focus on me by doing stuff, okay? I, you know, you see people go out and they lunge horses and they lunge them and lunge them and lunge them and, and they're really not achieving anything other than getting the horse fit. But if I'm doing stuff like this, then my horse starts to pay attention to me. So what I'm doing here at the moment is I'm actually disengaging this horse's hind quarters. So the process, the process is that I will bring the rope to my belly, I will step forward and I'll hit the ground with the stick. What I want him to do is I want him to push his butt away from me, to face me like that, keeping the same distance away, I don't want him coming over top of me. And as he moves his butt away from me, I want him to cross those back legs. So, we ask him again. That's not great, I'll send him again. Now, something that's really important with groundwork is if your horse does when your horse does something really good, you need to reward them by giving them some time. So if he does a good job there, say, if I stop and do nothing for a minute, at that moment I'm reinforcing the fact that he did a good job. And there's my release. Okay. Horses, when they get the lesson, will show you a sign of release. That little lick in the chew then, he's showing me that he's paying attention to me and he's understanding what I'm asking. 
Okay, we're progressing. Now, see, for example, he's got his ears back up and he's looking over there. I would send him out again. And I'll disengage him again. Now, I'm over exact, like I'm over exaggerating with him a little bit. Like this horse has yeah. done a fair bit of this, so I should be able to just go like that and him disengage. But to start with, if you're teaching a horse to do this, use a stick. We have actually, I've stepped over a couple of steps to show you this simply because he wasn't paying attention to me, and it was a good opportunity to show you what I would do with a horse, one of my horses, if I was at an event or even at home and I went to saddle them up or get on them and they were behaving like this, this is exactly what I'd be doing with them. So once I have them educated to disengage their hind quarters, my next step is to get them to move their shoulders. So again, it's relatively simple. You stop your feet, put the stick under your rope, point in your new direction and send them out. Now you might have seen there, he actually fell in on me a little bit. And this is where the stick comes into play. I have a lot of people at clinics who come and they have dressage whips or lunge whips or things like that. And those tools have their place. But unfortunately do something like this. If you use a dressage whip, if this horse was to fall in on me and I had a dressage whip, the first thing the dressage whip is going to do is it's just going to bow. Okay, and I have no way of actually pushing that horse away from me. Whereas a solid stick like this, I can go like that, just like I would if it was my inside leg. You know, thinking, we're trying to relate all of what we're doing on the ground to what's going to happen when we're under saddle. So if I want to push my horse's boot cage out and I put my inside leg on, I can replicate that by using my stick. Okay? So, there we go. And look, I get a release straight away. Okay? He's starting to get a little more focused on me. He's starting to think about a little more. He's still looking around a fair bit. But like I said, he's a young horse. If he was behaving like this and I'd come here to, if I was going to do a ridden demo on him, I wouldn't get on him at this point because I need him more focused on me than that. No? So what you might notice as he's trotting around on the circle, and if you see my ridden demos later, you'll see me do this under saddle. But I'm particular about the fact that my horses need to be bent in their direction of travel. So I want him bent from his pole to his tail around me. Now, if I was riding him, I would bend him by pushing my inside leg on and pushing his ribcage out. But because I'm not riding him, like I said before, I use my stick. And I make sure he's driving from behind at the same time. There's no good him getting around here and not actually engaging his hind end. I need him to be working. I don't want him getting along out here like a big old slug, thinking about his breakfast. I need him focused on me. So notice the change, and if I change him here, notice the change in his flexion when I change my direction. There. See how he actually gets right over his hind quarters and arcs himself away from me. So when it's done correctly, imagine a cutting horse. You know how, that wasn't very good. You know a cutting horse when they get right over their hocks and put all that weight in their hocks? Now, it doesn't matter what discipline you do. Every horse in every discipline must be able to engage its hind quarters. Whether you're a camp drafter, whether you're a dressage rider, a show jumper, even if you're just a trail rider, if your horse can't engage his hind end correctly, it can make things like going uphill a little hard going. They need to be able to drive through from behind. So this is what we're asking him to do. You start to notice now, he's starting to get a little more focused on me. His ears are pricked on me. Now he's kind of starting to work out that this is probably going to continue until he actually gets a little more focused on me. So by disengaging away, asking to move. Notice he changes his flexion, he rocked over his hind quarters and he changed his flexion. Good. The other thing I do, and that relates to my ridden work, is I will use my voice. Now, my voice commands are pretty simple. Um, and, and you need to keep it simple. There's no good telling your horse an essay. 
you know, if I say, please, you will you walk now, and I, then I want you to trot, and now I'd like you to count, it means nothing. Okay, they're not human, despite what people think. They do not understand the English language. However, they will understand a certain set of cues. So for my horses, and this is just what I do, you can use whatever you like. You can, you know, you can use Timbuktu to can or whatever you want. But, but my commands simply are, if I'm a horse to walk, it's walk. If I cluck, it's trot. If I kiss, it's canter. And if I want them to stop, it's woe. If I need them to slow, which in my sport I need them to do a lot, it's steady. Okay, that's it. And then no, that's the, oh, that's the only cues they sort of need. Oh, come on, when I need them to come to, to me. You know, like that's it. You know, I don't, I don't have a big language. And these horses get this way off this voice command. Um, I have a horse that, that I bred and trained and my mum rides him now. And we can be riding side by side. I can be riding one of my horses, she can be riding one of hers. I can control him off my voice, even though she's riding him. If I cluck, he will trot off no matter what she wants him to do. Okay? And that's because I've done, you know, I've done a lot of work with him and he's been with me his whole life. And um, he's a little more, probably, he thinks I'm a little more serious sometimes than she is. She's too nice to him. Um, you know, but I can, I can still, he's, I, I have, I barely ride him at all these days. I ride him under suffering. Um, and, you know, you know, he, he will still listen to me. Now, you guys saw what happened there. He suddenly decided that there was the most scariest thing in the world coming from behind him. So, you know what? I need to remind him that actually I'm standing here. Now, what you might have noticed when he did do that, and this is what good groundwork does, he took fright of that horse and he jumped forward, but he didn't actually come anywhere near me. He just kind of went, oh, that scared me, and then he stopped, okay? This is what you're looking for in your groundwork. You need them to check in before they leave, okay? I don't mind so much that he took fright of the flighty coming through. What I'm happy about is the fact that he jumped forward, but at no stage was I in any danger, okay? Now he's a little snotty. You know, like that's rattled him a little bit. That's okay, that's fine, heart attacks are free. He'll get over it, you know, it's a little bit of work. So the other thing you'll notice about him when he's doing his groundwork, you see how he stays away from me, okay? I have a little rule in my clinics. This is my circle. That horse has no business to be inside that space, okay? I see so many horses at clinics that are hair ornaments, okay? You know, I got a big long plait. I don't need a big buckskin hair ornament hanging off the end of that, thanks very much. But so many people think that's what their horses are. And you'll be standing at clinics, and he won't, there's no way he'll do it. But you'll be standing at clinics, and the horses will be nuzzling them and pushing on them. The problem is, that nuzzling on a horse, like on you, you, or rubbing on you uninvited, you know what, you might think that's okay, but then one day a little kid comes along and your horse does that and knocks him over. Or, and I've seen this a lot over the years, you know when people let the horses put their heads in their belly? Well, imagine if I'd had that horse's head here when that Clyde went past. I'd have, you know, someone would have been finishing the, de finishing the demo because I'd have a blood nose and things like that. You know, so this is the thing. Because this horse respects all this stuff already on the ground, it makes my job so much easier on the saddle. He's already respecting what I'm on about, okay? I will spend time sending horses back. You know, I want to be able, I want to be able to walk up to him and give him a pat, don't get me wrong, I do pat the horses. Um, I want to be able to walk up, give him a pat, I want to be able to walk away, and I want him to stay there, okay? I don't want that, okay? Because what he's doing at that point, if he walks up to me like that, he's, he's looking to me, like he wants to be on top of me, he wants me to, you know, when this horse goes out in the competition arena in the next 12 months, I want him to be confident in himself and confident enough in me that he does not feel that he needs me to be his crutch. You know, he, he's a, he, he's, not, like he's not finished growing yet. He's gonna be a big, strong horse. 
and, and I want him to be confident in himself. You know, he's still looking around a little bit today and doing stuff like that. But, that, you know, that's okay. He's, you know, like I said, it's a demo, and if I was going to ride him, I'd probably spend a bit more time. You now, I wouldn't have stopped to talk to you guys. I would have kept groundwork him while I was doing it. Um, you know, so if I walk up, give him a pat, that's awesome. If I walk away, I have not asked him using any cue to move. And this is where your body language comes into it. And, and this is so important when you ride or do groundwork. When you walk in the paddock to catch your horse, you know, I see so many people ask their horses to do stuff at clinic, and they'll go, let's say they're going to ask them to disengage. They'll stand here and go, disengage your hind foot. You know, act like you mean it. You know, you've got to be serious about what you do. Um, you know, people wouldn't come to my clinics if I wasn't serious about teaching them. So why do you expect your horse to be serious about learning if you're not serious about teaching it? You've got to actually mean it. So always be aware of what your body language is doing on the ground and then that will translate to your ridden work. If, you, if you're riding, if you're riding and you ask your horse to go forward and you're like this, you know, that's not a great cue, okay? Uh, go forward, go forward, Blackie, go forward. You're sitting up there looking up, shoulders back, you know, that says go forward. Whether you're walking on the ground or sitting on the horse's back, it translates to the same thing. So if I'm going to ask this horse to disengage, now remembering he's a little overly switched on today, I'm going to be very subtle in my body language. I'm not going to get too wound up. So, you know, I'm just going to stand here and look at me. My shoulders are dropped, I'm like, Note the difference between how I'm standing now and how I'm standing when I'm sending him around before when he wasn't paying attention to me, okay? He knows, he knows that I'm not going to ask him to move his feet at this point. Oh, really? You're stepping ahead of the program. So, he thinks he knows how this works now. So here's the thing. I'm going to ask him to give his nose, okay? This is the first thing I do with my horses when I'm weaning them. When I first catch them, when we breed our horses at home, we actually don't handle them. We handle them when they're born, and then we let them go and hang with their mothers until they're weaned. Um, let them go and be horses. We're lucky enough to have a, a, a fair bit of country where they can have big paddocks and, and roam and do what horses should do. Um, so when I first get them in the eyes and I catch them, the very first thing I teach these weanlings, and it stays with them fair bit, ask them to give their nose, okay? Now, you guys will know, when I pick up on the rope, when I pick up on the rope and ask him to give, if he gives, I drop that rope straight away. That makes sure you do not give him mixed messages. When you're learning this kind of stuff, what a lot of people do is they get them here and then they keep hold. And you know, that, that doesn't teach your horse anything. Remembering, your horse has learned from the release. If I keep hold of that horse, he doesn't know what he's done right. He's like, you're just holding my head. I want this horse to be so happy to come around here that I can do that. And I can lean here like this and give him a pat. If he pulls his head away, I'm going to ask it to come back. That's what I want to be able to do. Now, what you might be noticing, you know when we started the demo, the boys went through and the head went up and the ears went up and we were like, ah, you know, the aliens are coming to get us. Um, can you notice how he's lowering his neck? Look at his ears, look at his eyes, look at his whole facial expression. He softens so much in that time. And that's what we want. This is the first exercise I will do when I get to the horse. I will get up here and I will actually bend them around. And what you have to be aware of is, just like I'm doing here, make sure your hand comes out and around like that. You're guiding their nose. You know, treat them, you know, treat them nice. You've got to be nice about it. So, you know, if I ask him to bring his nose around, my hand comes out and around and back to here. It's soft. I let it go. I'll give him a pat the forehead. Took his head away. I'll bring it back. So this has two, two elements to it. I do this all the time with my ridden horses to keep them soft and supple. Um, so they will give the pressure. I like to know that they will give the pressure. This horse in his training, he, he doesn't particularly like um, a whole heap of, of pressure on his face. That's just, that's just the horse he is. So you know, exercises like this are great for him because I need him to know that I can put him in that position and he's gonna be safe. The other thing about asking your horse to give his head is it's the first stage of your one rein stop. And you know, the one rein stop is the first thing that our horses learn under saddle. Well, they learn to go forward, 
and then they learn one rack off. A young horse like this, that like we've been working on, he will not have had, he will not have been pulled on with two reins for months. When we first start them under saddle, and I have a, a guy who helps me out with it, um, he does a great job, and, and his whole method, he just, it's all one rein, one rein. And when I bring them home, it's one rein, one rein, one rein. Because of course, what you do, is when you grab with two reins, you give them something to pull. Okay, and I don't want, ever want these horses to brace against me. Okay, I, I, I want them to be soft and supple and can never brace against me. So, from the get-go, we make sure they always stop with one rein stop. And I do, even my open competition horses, they go back and do always one rein stop, one rein stop, just to keep them soft and supple, and so that they, you know, learn to just keep reminding them to give to the pressure. And so the next thing that I like horses to be able to do is I like them to be able to disengage on the ground. Now, of course, this is based. This is kind of the second step of what we were doing our training program. So. I make sure, everything I do, I always make sure that I am desensitising them before and after I sensitise them. So I just stand here and rub the stick, watch my body language again. I'm rocking back on my heels. My shoulders are droop, my eyes aren't particularly focused. Okay, I'm just, I've got a soft focus on my eyes. You know, and I'm just going to rub him down here for a cool about this. When your horse is relaxed and calm, like today he's a little... More, I'd probably spend more time rubbing him down at the time. But when your horse is relaxed and calm, change your focus. <laughs> lean forward, put your foot forward, lean forward, look here at this hip, because this is what I need to move. And then change your focus and ask this horse to move. See, straight away, as soon as I move my focus, he starts to shift. You know, he, he's already got this. There's another big scary Clyde Dale coming, so you know. So you know what? I'm going to get his feet in. If, he, if he's more interested in that lifestyle and what's going on with me, I'm going to make sure he gets a little busy. So, I'm going to switch sides just so you guys can see, but it's worth always remembering. You know, every time you switch sides on a horse, you can expect a new reaction. Okay? Your horse, you've changed sides, you've changed sides of their brain, so you can actually expect a different reaction. So, you know, if this horse has never had this arm or a bit touchy about the stick, this is where I'd go back to being jumping around, he's pretty bruised. So, you know, I'm going to ask him, so I'm going to put my weight forward, put my focus forward, and ask him to step. Now, what you want is you want those hind legs to go across, okay? He, um, he's not the world's greatest horse at disengaging. But you know what, I can sort of take that. Now, he's got a little tuned up to this game today. Um, but basically what I would do I'll change my focus, I'll hold my stick over his butt and I'll just, you saw, just like I did with him then. If nothing happens, I will go three gentle taps. If nothing happens, I will increase my pressure until I get one step. Okay? One, and, and that's all you want. First day, one step. That's enough. Because they don't need to do any more than that. So, you know, but once they get chewing a little bit, they're kind of used to the deal, you might stand here and you might ask for a couple of steps. And you can see when he gets moving, how he starts to step further across. That's what we're looking for. I want him to be able to actually step around and, and move up, okay? Um, you know? And by, again, see, he's starting to lose his focus on me. If I was to get on this horse now, the way he is today, you would probably be fairly entertained. I probably wouldn't think it was very funny, you know? So I need him more focused than this on me, you know. The good thing is he's not running me down or leaving or anything like that, you know. So that, that, that's a good start. That's a really good start. Um, another great use for your stick, and something I, I particularly love doing with my horses, is desensitising them to stick and strength. Um, you know, and all this is just about, this sort of stuff is about, you know, you're sitting on their back and and um, you know someone comes flying past them, or you go places and, and um, you know someone decides to practice a little bit you know and how many horses do you see to part town as soon as someone brings a stop to about I actually do think the horses to stop to on the ground spend a lot of time with them with a stop to on the ground 
Um, but you just never know when you're going to come across something like that or that plastic bag that's sitting there and your horse is going to go, oh, I've never seen this before, you know. We're getting this stuff done on the ground. Like I said, it's easier for me to control him standing here with his halter than it is for me to get up there and think I can fix these problems, you know. Um, Gordon McKinley had a quote, you know, the more times you get, but the more times you hit the ground, the better your groundwork will become. And it's kind of true. You know, you get to my age, I don't want to hit the ground. I hurt too much when I hit the ground these days. So, you know, I'll just desensitise him to the right while I'm talking to you. And now I will start sensitising. So, what you do is you get your stick and you start out kind of wise. You've had a horse and they've done this, and you might start gentle. So, you know, if you get a horse that's really sensitive, this might be enough pressure for them. And what you will do is you will work over time to where you can put a heap of pressure on right beside them. Now note, even though I've braced my body a little bit because I have to swing this bit up, note how I'm not going, what do I do? Okay? I don't want him to move. If he was to move, and the other thing is what I've done a bit of this, if he was to move at this point, I would just gently follow him with the stick. And the string, the biggest mistake you can make if you're asking a horse to do something is to take the pressure off them when they are doing what you don't want them to do. He moved off there and I stopped hitting. I've just rewarded him for the wrong thing. So, you know, say you're working on your horse and you might get here and then he starts to move off and you start to have a little trouble. If you have to get your string back to here before he will stop, that's okay. Stop, get it back there, get everything under control and then start again. Okay, so then what you want to be able to work up to, I need to pick, get more I want him to be able to cope with this. So you can see he's not even paying attention. He's always not You know, he can't ask for more to do much more than that, except for hitting with the stick. Like, <laughs> and even then, I accidentally hit him with the stick and he kind of went, Ugh. But he didn't go anywhere. He, he knew by my body language and what's been going on that I wasn't asking him to move. You know? And that's, that's something else I kind of like. I like the fact that, you know, doing this sort of groundwork, it actually gives you a little room to make a mistake. I make mistakes. I, you know, zig when I should have zagged when I'm riding and do all those sorts of crazy things. You know, so, you know, if I can make sure that he's going to forgive me a little bit for those mistakes, it's going to make my life a lot easier. Okay. You know, he's licking and chewing more and more. He didn't even move that time. You know, he looked at them as they went past. We didn't have a heart attack. We didn't leave. You know, and, and that's what we're looking for. We want, we want them to be like that, you know. We want them to know that's okay. You know, and, and I, I really like, you know, in fact, of course, like him, you know, I can just, I'm not, as you've seen, I, you know, I trust him, I've done my work with him. I'm not even really like holding the rope that closely because I'm talking to you guys and talking to you what I'm doing. And that's when you start to know you're getting somewhere with them, to me, on the ground. Um, my big horse that I'll ride <laughs> last thing this afternoon, he, um, I did a clinic with him oh, 12 months ago. He's just seven now. And I did a clinic with him 12 months ago. It was in an arena, oh, probably twice as big as this one. And, and I just dropped the, and we were doing the groundwork session, I just dropped the rope and left him. Like I can leave him in the middle of 10 horses and drop the rope and go and help people and do whatever and he'll just stand there until I come back. You know, because he's w worked out over time that this is easy, you know. Working is hard, you know. He, he, he'd rather he'd rather stand still than make me do stuff with him. And you know, that, that's pretty cool. Um, I love working with a bag. Now, I know there's some trying to use a flag and all that sort of stuff, you know, that's awesome. But I personally would like to know that this horse isn't scared of plastic bag, you know. I have to go out in public a lot, um, you know, places like this, you know, plastic bags are around, you know. There's nothing to say that one wouldn't blow over there on the main street and hit this arena today. So, you know, I want him to be okay with it. You can see he's a little bit of it. You know, he's going, oh, I haven't seen that for a while. And I want him to be okay. So, of course, I'm going to need to I'm going to rub him down with it. Now, something people need to be aware of when they're doing this kind of stuff, the biggest danger is when this crosses over that horse's back. Because while I'm standing...
working on this side, you know my position all the time when I'm working here. I'm working it's so he's got room to leave that way. Okay? But if I cross this over here and he's never seen it, if he now see it over another eye, and I increase the chance of him taking a big right and coming over huh? me. Okay, he is the one for that. But he's done a lot of it. So put a little pressure on him. See if he can handle it. You know, look, now there's scary people. You know, and I'll get them and I'll put it around them. You can, like, look at his body language. He's gone a little back to that, oi, oi, oi. You know, he's not super chuffed about this. I'll just keep going with him until he relaxes. When he's got, to so that windy day, to wait for this, because look what that's doing. That's awesome. Thank <laughs> you.